We made a free and open source demo of the Nakama server technology in Godot, uh, showing you how you can get started creating an online multiplayer game experience. Nakama is a server technology that's free and open source under the Apache license made by Herrick Labs. You've probably seen the logo as you see it every time you start Godot 3.2, I believe, uh, a big sponsor of the project. So you can find the Nakama server technology on GitHub and you now have the Nakama Godot demo to see how to use the Godot client. So in this video, I'm going to show you how the demo works really quickly, showcase it. So let me start it now. I'm going to uh, move that to another window. And first, let's take a look at the game with the server running. So I'm logging in. I can find my characters, create a new one, let's say. Uh, how should we call it? GD Quest. You can see the game, you can move around the game area, you can chat if you want, change the character's color. The point is to show you key features of the server technology and how to code them in GDScript. Now I'm going to run another instance of the game here. I'll have them side by side and I need to use another account. There you go. So now I have a second character that arrived in the game. You can now see the character moving with the server running. So the server is local, but it simulates some latency. So I can chat, of course, and in the other window, it's going to be a bit small. You can see that the game, all this, we are going to cover in a Godot Nakama tutorial that is in preparation at the moment. It's not going to be a big enough friendly series we try to see if we could do that, but making online multiplayer games is something that takes some really good programming foundations. So the style is going to be more geared towards intermediate level developers, programming students who already have one or two years of experience. We'll do our best to make it accessible, but it's the kind of code, if you need someone to show you all the steps to make it, you're not ready to make an online game. From there, I'm going to give you a really high level brief look at the project. I have it open in Godot. And first of all, I should say that you can find a link in the description to the source code. You also have some instructions to get started testing the project as you need to install a few things. You need to be able to use the command line as well. The project looks like this. When you open it, you will land on the main menu the main menu that contains the login and register interface and the character menu with the ability to create, delete and select a character before entering the game world. The user interface itself just handles user interface interaction. There are no calls to the server from this part. We're trying to group the server interaction, the requests as much as possible into the top level node of any given scene. In the main menu, it's in the main menu script here. And if you go to the game world, it should be, is it the level node? No, uh, we should have a, yeah, it should be there, game world. You have quite a bit of the server interaction here in the game world.gd script. So the main flow of the project is, well, as you can see in the main directory, or maybe I have to move that. Well, you start in main menu and then you go into the game world, right? From there, once you've logged in, selected a character. So these are the main two scenes. The top level node, main menu, game world is going to send a request to the server server through an autoloaded node that you can find in the autoload directory. It's called server connection. And you'll see you have lots of comments that make the code look longer than it is. But this is the heart of the communication with the Nakama client and in turn with the server. So you will see lots of calls to Nakama, um, the Nakama socket and the Nakama API in general. The Nakama API you can find in the add-ons directory, the hericlabs.nakama there. 
and it has uh, quite a few classes that you can use to call functions to do a variety of things so to um, uh, authenticate the user to connect to the server through a socket you can use it to uh, send messages like on the chat uh, store information on the server and all sorts of things really just so you know that server connection class calls a lot of stuff from that Nakama API and it's all documented in the comments in there. For example, in main menu, um, I'll just take one brief example. You enter your credentials. So for example, here you're going to register, right? You enter your email, password, and you repeat the password. From there, you press the register button on the enter key, and it's going to emit the register pressed signal. This one connects to the main menus on login and register, register pressed there. That's going to um, set so the interface to saying like it's authenticating, it disables the interface, and then it's going to call a few functions that are asynchronous. You can see the yield keyword used quite a lot in the project here. So first we register a new account and if we manage to register it, we are going to authenticate you. Authentication happens through the authenticate user um, method of main menu. This one is mostly going to do a few attempts at logging you in um, with the server. So that's what this loop does at the moment. And you can see it uses a coroutine waiting for the server connections login async uh, method to return. And that uh, login async, all the methods called async are coroutines. So you need to use the yield keyword when you call them because you are sending some information to the server or some request and you need to wait for some time for the server to send you the information back. So in Godot, you do that with coroutines. If that worked and you want to remember your email, we save your email. Uh, it's saved on the disk in the user directory. Open the character menu. Otherwise, we tell you there was an error. And um, that's about it for this method. So that's one example. But a lot of the interactions happen like that. Like there are several stages, several uh, levels of indirection where you call a method, well, you have a signal that calls a method that's going to call into server connection. And if we go to login async, this is in turn going to call into the authenticate class. Um, that's in turn, if we go there, did it open? Yeah, it opened the authenticator. That then is going to call um, through the Nakama API, right? Um, that can sound a bit complex like that. Once you get into it, you'll, you understand that it's just to separate concerns. Everything that has to do with authentication is handled by the authenticate class, which is a delegate of the server connection class in that case. Anyway, this I will cover in greater details into a tutorial to get you started with the technology. And we'll talk about authentication with a minimal example, uh, how to create a, a session, connect to the server with a socket. And um, we'll see all that in greater details. But for now, you can look at the code there. Everything you find in the UI directory is related to UI with Godot. It has nothing server specific. So if you want to make user interface for your games, this is a good place to look at. Um, the game world, like the level, the characters are in the world directory. Main is going to have only the game world and the main menu. So the main scenes of the game, I have to move these really, uh, I'm going to move all that to the UI menu right now. And in the auto loads, you will find server connection and its delegates, the storage worker that handles storage of information. Exception handler is a small class that is going to turn uh, an error from the Nakama server into a Godot error code, I believe. 
and the authenticator handles authentication. But with that, I invite you to uh, go check out the code for yourself at the moment. You can test it, play a bit with it, um, see the kind of code you need to create a real world game with Nakama multiplayer. Uh, our experience working with it is that it is uh, much simpler than working with the, um, like if you try to code all the stuff that Nakama handles um, by yourself in Godot and using some server technology, it's much more complicated than using this one. So it's pretty good. We've had a pretty good experience with it. Of course, this is still server stuff. So it's much more complicated than um, writing just single player, local multiplayer code. Another note, it's that, um, so what I showed you in the Godot editor is all the Godot side code. So the client code, but you also have some server code in there in the Nakama directory. And you'll find it in the modules subdirectory. This code is written in Lua. You can write server code for Nakama in Go or Lua. And well, in case you're just getting started with servers, just so you know, the um, world RPC is going to give, to define the remote procedure call. So the, the functions you can call on the server to do something that's not necessarily part of the main game loop, but you can see uh, removing a character by name. Uh, I think the remote procedure calls are at the bottom here. So you can ask for a world's ID to join a world where other players are connected. You can register a character with a given name in the game and remove it from that. So world RPC would be the procedures you can call on the server to do, I don't know, to manage some data in the game. Uh, and finally, you have world control. This is the part of the server code that controls the game world. So it says things like, okay, there's a new player, you're a new player joining the game. You have this character. It's going to spawn at that position, right? You can see that we've kind of hard coded that at the moment. Um, and it does things like it, you send it information from your client. Like I jumped, I press that button, uh, I moved to that position and the server is going to check that and tell the other players that um, you are at that location, you did that. But also it's, you know, you always want the server to validate everything the player does in an online game like that. And to do so, uh, you need some codes, like everything the player does has to be checked by the server. We don't do anything advanced in there. We really cover the, the basics, but, um, this is the, the, found, the kinds of foundations you need to make an online game. So you have quite a bit of code that's going to update the character's position. And it's also going to start and end the game match. Anyway, I'll let you read all that code and the comments, and I'll let you know when the tutorial is available. Uh, you can see that I'm working on it in the docs directory. You have the course plan, and you're going to find code snippets as well down there. I'm currently building them up. So I invite you to look at that as well because it's a bit like a mini tutorial where I'm already breaking some of the complexity of all that code for you. But with that, I want to thank you kindly for watching. Be creative, have fun. Let's see one another in the next one. Bye-bye.